After unarmed father Terence Crutcher was shot and killed by police, hundreds protested here in Tulsa. What many didn't know is that nearly 100 years ago, on these very streets on which they were marching, hundreds of African Americans were killed in one of the darkest chapters of Tulsa's and America's history. A lot of folks around here used to whisper about it over the decades, but nobody, black nor white, wanted to talk about it. And that history was being forgotten. Before it happened, Tulsa was the scene of a thriving, wealthy black community. Black Wall Street was the most prosperous black-owned business district in 1921. This was Black Wall Street. There were hundreds of black-owned businesses, everything from banks to pharmacies to the doctor's office. And black folks were making really good money. There were even two movie theaters, all black-owned and operated. Segregation was in full effect. We heard that there was a gentleman who owned a plane, is that true? Simon Barry was a, a pilot and owned his own uh, plane. Black folks were rich here, basically. They lived very good lives. Many of them, yes, yes. Which caused some um, envy and anger um, among white people who commented, how dare those Negroes have a grand piano in their house and I don't have a piano in my house. 1921 rolls around, what happens? Some type of confrontation between blacks and whites was inevitable because of the uh, racial climate at that time, because of the presence of the Ku Klux Klan um, in almost every aspect of our society. But on this particular day, May 31st, 1921, a young uh, black male named Dick Rowland, who worked as a shoeshine boy in downtown Tulsa, went into the Drexel building where he had been given permission to get water and use the restroom. There was a young white girl named Sarah Page who was an elevator operator. And Dick Rowland every day would go into uh, the elevator uh, with Sarah Page on this particular day. After the elevator doors closed and Sarah Page and Dick Rowland were alone in the elevator, a few moments later there was a scream, the elevator doors opened, Dick Rowland ran and was later arrested and Sarah Page initially claimed that she had been assaulted. Brown says Page never pressed charges, but authorities did and the damage was done. By the end of the day, the rumor mill said Page had been raped. As word spread, um, angry uh, whites were determined that they were going to take matters into their own hands. A large crowd of white residents gathered at the courthouse. They demanded Dick Rowland be lynched. How did the black community respond to that demand to lynch this young man? They were willing to risk their lives. They knew that they would be risking their lives to help defend Dick Rowland. And thousands of whites gathered in front of the courthouse. A white man approached a black man with a gun. He said, what are you going to do with that gun? He said, I'm going to use it if I have to. The two men argued. There was a struggle over the gun. It fired. The white resident was shot. All hell broke loose. Blacks retreated to the Greenwood District where they set up a barrier at the railroad tracks and were able for a short time to keep whites from invading their community. But because they were so outnumbered and outgunned, uh, whites eventually broke through uh, the railroad tracks and invaded uh, what was home to Black Wall Street, the Greenwood District. This was the result. 35 city blocks of the black neighborhood burned to the ground. Historical photos show black residents shot dead in the streets. The historical account is that at least 300 people were killed. There were children that were here that had been armed by their parents, that had been told that they could come down to Greenwood and shoot and kill an innocent person. Those are the same people that we grew up with in our communities, that were a part of our society. How many black people lost their lives? There's really no way of knowing exactly how many people lost their lives, potentially thousands of innocent men, women, and children. What is worse, survivors say they remember death not just in the streets, but raining down from the sky. Many of our race riot survivors um, have commented that they remembered seeing planes flying overhead, dropping bombs, dropping nitroglycerin bombs. Mrs. Hazel Smith Jones is believed to be the last living survivor in Tulsa. She's 97 years old. My daddy wasn't at home. Just the, uh, the kids and mama. They came and got us. Was it white people from the uh -huh. city? Uh, and cat uh, 
fairground. And we was there for about two or three days. To the fairgrounds? And my dad didn't know where we were. Did your family want to leave? My mother, you know, with all this stuff going on, she thought it might have been safer with them taking us out there and being with more people. Everyone called it a race riot. The opinion piece in the newspaper condoned it, calling Greenwood nigger town. Do you consider it a riot? No, ma'am, it was really murder. It was a massacre. Uh, my grandmother was awakened at night and just told to run, just get up and run. And they ran, she was only nine, they ran for days. She got mixed up from her family and lost in a chicken coop. Calling it a riot was convenient for a city run by whites. There's no statute of limitations for murder, but there is for a riot for the black victims. It was devastating. They never received any type of justice for losing their loved ones, for losing their homes and the businesses that they worked so hard for, that they built from the ground up. Every insurance claim from the Greenwood neighborhood was denied. The claims totaled about $2.7 million. Black Wall Street did recover, but never to its former glory. Do you think life is better for black folks in America now? Yeah. Some, some places, yes, yeah, some, some places, some places not. If there was any clearer sign that change in race relations has happened to this community, this was it. During a march for a black father slain by a police officer, half of those marching were black and the other half white, all marching in unison, saying black lives matter. But there are stark reminders of the racism that continues to thrive in some people's hearts. So the marching and the worrying continues.